Good morning and welcome to Digging the Coast 365. Big day ahead, really excited, full of energy. Um, the plan is to take you to Dartmoor again, tell you a few little tales, then take you to the Jolly Roger life-size... It's like a museum. It, it's strange, it's hard to explain. And then we're going to try and get to Bovy Sand and do a bit of metal detecting. I'm not 100% sure, it all depends how we are for time, but uh, we're not going to get it done by standing in the kitchen, are we? Let's get out there, come on! So here we are back on Dartmoor because I wanted to show you this. Now this is an unmarked grave but it's got a lot of stories and legends about it. Legend has it that there's a young girl in here who was an orphan girl back in the late 1700s, possibly early 1800s, nobody knows. Uh, she was a young orphan girl and she got made an apprentice on a local farm as like a servant. While she was there she got seduced by a young farmer boy. Well, man. You know, they were probably men. Men and women. They're not going to be too young. And she fell in love with him. But he didn't feel the same way about her, it turned out. He got her pregnant and everybody turned against her saying, you whore, you Dirty, dirty girl, get out, you disgust us all. And the farmer boy didn't want to know, he moved on and, and started seeing another girl, apparently. So this poor girl was all alone, she didn't know who to turn to, where to go. Uh, she was so depressed and pregnant, she hung herself. She committed suicide from a tree uh, in a local barn, sorry. Some people say in a tree, some people say in a barn. She committed suicide. Now, it was very against the law to commit suicide. It still is. But uh, it was a very shameful thing to do back in the early 1800s. And no church would bury her. Now, what they did with people like this who committed suicide, they just buried them anywhere. This girl was buried here. This used to be a crossroads. You've got the main road here going from side to side. And you've got a track going down here, which followed up here. So back in the 1800s, this was a crossroads. And they just dumped her here, they buried her here. And then in, the eight, in about 1860, a farmer found the body. People dug up the body and uh, examined it and found out it was that of a, girl, of a woman. That's all they said, a woman. And just uh, basically reburied her bones here as you see them today. Ever since this uh, body has been put here in about 1860, there has always been fresh flowers on this grave, every single time. Now, there is a story saying that there used to be a, a hooded person in black who used to come and put flowers on there. Um, and they think it might have been the actual farmer boy himself. Some people even suggest it was pixies. Pixies come through the night and replace the flowers. What a load of rubbish, that didn't happen, that didn't happen. I don't believe that for a second. But people come nowadays and they leave things as a mark of respect, as you can see. Some people leave money, 22 pence there, um, and flowers and there's some beautiful holly. So that's the story of KJ. No, 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 no. That's what you're led to believe. There's an even older story um, going back from before KJ of an old woman called K. You see the connection? KJ, JK. Sorry, this is JK, but the old woman was called K. And they've just got the story mixed up. They've made it sound good for tourists to come flocking. In here is a poor old woman called K who committed suicide. That's the real fact. So as a mark of respect, I'm going to leave something as well. What I'm going to leave is one 
for J and one for K. And these are old half pennies, 1966, the year we won the World Cup. So one for either of you girls, whoever's in there, whichever of you it is, God bless you and uh, it's nice that you still remembered and a shame you had to go through suicide. It's time to move on. I love this place, I really do. Everyone's been saying how eerie it is. It is, it's really eerie, really, really eerie. And I'm liking it, I'm getting to like Dartmoor. Um, but yeah, I need to go on somewhere else because I've got a few things I need to tell you, a few tales. So if you can see this, I'm coming from where the tip of my finger there, that's the road, that's where I am. And I'm heading to here, it's uh, an old medieval village. And this is Hound Tor. Basically a hill full of rocks. And there you see it. Well, you can't, can you? <laughs> it's a bit too misty, but... Uh, we're just heading up there now. Can you see it yet? This is beautiful, it really is. Just look at the markings on that rock, it's amazing. It's almost as if there was a giant here playing noughts and crosses with a mouse. And the giant was crosses. And he didn't let the mouse have a go. It's just full of crosses from a giant. That looks amazing. I've had to stop for a rest, I'm tired. A big hill is that. Right, let's bring you up to date with the donations received since the last video. Done very well. Peter Erfurt, £10. Tim and Alec from Michigan, $20. Fraser McBurney, $30. Come on, get in, $5. Lucy Wells, $20. Cindy Reinecke, $200. Wow. Basher, £10. And Martin Nicholson, £30. And Leon Campbell, £30. Absolutely fantastic, guys. Thank you so much. We are now up to a total of £19,362. Fantastic. We're nearly up to £20,000. If you'd like to donate, even if you don't want to donate, just donate or else by clicking on the links in the description, go to digginthecourse.com and it shows you what to do on there. Thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate it. Right, let's get on to this medieval village. It's still quite a walk, but I think it's downhill from here. I'm gonna get lost again. This is very typical of moorland in, uh, in England. Where I come from, it's actually moorland all around that area. Um, it's quite beautiful, really. And it is, as people say, it's mystical, it's eerie. You never seem to get good weather on the moors, but it's always nice to go. I used to go as a child going bilberry picking, make bilberry pie, which was always nice. And just over here is our medieval village, I can see it. And here we are. Certainly quite a lot of stones, you can certainly see the outline of all the buildings. Um, let's go find a quiet spot and I'll see if I can find anything out about it to tell you. So here we are in the medieval village. Now, they think that in the Bronze Age this was farmed. They think the Romans might have taken it over. And in medieval times, in the 1200s, they used this right up to the 1500s, and then everyone disappeared. Um, it consists of some what they call longhouses, Dartmoor longhouses. I'm actually stood in one of them at the moment. And if you can see the next one, this one's slightly larger, some of them have a water channel going, a drainage system going through the middle. But, uh, yeah, very small, very small for a house, really. Um, but, you know, cosy, because someone will live there, and then there'll be somebody living here, 
and then somebody living here and they haven't even got a front door somebody living here as well so basically somebody who lives there will have to come through this person's house and this person's house and this person's house just to get out that could be awkward couldn't it you know don't think I'd like that the place was first mentioned in the Doomsday Book, so 1066, and it says what was here, there was one plough, two slaves, one vergate, I don't know what that is, four small holders with plough and vergate, meadow, nine acres, woodland, two acres, pasture, one acre, cattle, 28 sheep, 18 goats, value 20s, 20 shillings, did they have shillings back in 1066, I don't think so. 10s anyway. So yeah, there'll just have been a couple of people here actually. And a few sheep and goats. And a slave. It's a shame I can't give you a proper walk around it because it is quite large. I really wish I'd have brought the drone now. Um, it was in the car. I thought, well, this is quite a long walk to this one. So I'll leave it in the car, knowing it was uphill and didn't bother. Hey, one day I'm going to get some good footage with it, I can tell you. But yeah, this is all quite sweet. You know, I could live here. Not, you know, I don't like the idea of a slave, but... I bet it was quite peaceful, tranquil, lovely, beautiful, sexy and all that. Now it's time to leave the medieval village. I was going to stay there. To be honest, I wasn't going to come here. I just thought this would be a good setting to tell you some tales of Dartmoor. I was going to tell you some old folk, folklore tales and things. Um, but I read a few of the tales and they're a bit far-fetched about pixies and things like that. And I don't think they're true, to be honest with you. Um, you know, pixies with gold and doing work for people. And I think it's a load of rubbish. So, and I'm running out of time. It's 12 o'clock, it will, it will get dark in like four hours and I've still got a lot of driving to do and places to go so I'm going to have to start, there's not many hours in the day now we're coming up to the shortest day of the year, light wise which is the 21st of December, my birthday don't forget, I'm 27 um, <clears throat> yeah so I'm going to have to start managing my time a bit better I think because it was quite important today that I was going to try and get down to the beach. But I don't know if I'm going to have time now. But we'll see. I'm not giving up. But the problem is, even though it gets dark at four o'clock, I really want to be home by four o'clock each day. Um, so that I can edit to get you a video up for six, seven o'clock. But we'll see how we get on. <laughs> Quite a few people have been mentioning this jumper I'm wearing as well. It's, it's like two jumpers in one. Very thick fluff inside and thick knitted on the outside. It's very, very heavy. And I got it at a charity shop about three weeks ago. It's Fat Face, so it's a good brand. I got it at a charity shop. It was expensive for a charity shop, £25, but it is a lifesaver, it is absolutely fantastic. You will see me wearing this nearly every day. Um, I just wear different tops underneath it, you know? But this is better than any coat. It's, it's much more comfortable. So yeah, that's what it is. 25 pounds it cost. Probably about 150 pounds new. I was just coming through this delightful little village and I saw this and I thought, ooh, that's something special. But it's not that good. It is lovely. Um, there's like horses and a man in front there. But it's from 1948. Now, they do have crosses all across Dartmoor, which are like ancient. We're talking like Bronze Age, but this isn't one of them. Um, there's a bench here. Golden Jubilee. 
So that's only been there since 2002. A beautiful church in the background. It is a, a, an amazing little village. This is the kind of place you really do want to retire. Um, and the place is called Widecombe, I think. Widecombe in the Moor. But yeah, I'm just passing through. I just saw that. I thought, I better stop. I better film that. So the reason you get in historic sites first and then metal detecting second is because of the tide times. The tide is fully out at, I think it's about half past three. It gets dark at four o'clock. So trying to get some historic places in and then go to the beach. Um, whether I'll still make the beach, I don't know until I get there and have a look. But I had a good look. It's called Bovy Sand. And there is a guy who's metal detected there before. Uh, quite often he lives there. And he put some really good pictures on the internet showing after a storm all the sand had gone and it was just all down to rocks. And he was finding a lot of old coins. You know, early 1900s. A lot of old coins. And then he posted a picture, like, I don't know, nine, ten weeks after with sand coming up. 20 weeks after, more sand. And if there's sand there, I'm not even going to bother metal detecting. Fingers crossed there's no sand. If there's sand there, there's no point. Um, as he explained in his blog, it was a blog I read it on. Very interesting. Come on, let's get to Bovy Sand and have a look. I was supposed to pay to be in this car park, but sometimes you've just got to put your foot down and say, I'm not paying to stay in here. There's like four cars. It's huge. It's the size of a football field. It says, if there's nobody at the kiosk, go pay in the gift shop around the corner. I don't think so. I don't think so. I just wanted to look at a little, uh, little stony thing, which wasn't as good as I expected it to be. I'm not going to, I'm going to stop paying in car parks unless it's like a proper car park and people go in it. If it's an empty car park and nobody ever uses it, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to pay anymore. It's ridiculous. This, my friends, is where I've been trying to get to. But it's not looking good. Look at all the sand on that beach. I'm hoping I can have posted the pictures of what it should look like if you've got any chance of finding any old coins and stuff. This has been washed up uh, recently. The pictures I've seen of this place, it's like you see there with the rocks. It would be like that all the way down. Um, so there's no point detecting where the sand is. I might just take the dais because it's light. Go for a walk down there, take the drone and just see how we get on. I've literally got about an hour. Before I do, I thought we should get the drone out. I think I got some good shots then, uh, we'll find out when I get home, but I had to bring it down. I, I did what I had to do, but I had to bring it down because it was sending a dog by me. Someone came down with a dog and the dog went by me, so that's it for the drone. Hopefully, some decent pictures, we'll have to wait and see. Now, let's get metal detecting. This is the bit I'm doing, where all the rocks are. I knew this was going to be a good place. There's things here, as I say, I, I looked on this guy's blog and he found a lot of old coins. It was two years ago, there was a storm two years ago and it took all the sand off and it was just uh, rocks. And we had a storm about two weeks ago and there's rocks here, but there is still a lot of sand on here. But, signal number four I think this is, I've had a few bits of trash. I think I've got a coin, not looked at it yet. What have we got? Uh. Oh, it's just two pence. <laughs> it's a modern two pence. Never mind. 
as I say, this guy has found a lot of ki older coins as well as newer coins on here, so fingers crossed. So far I've had about three, four coins, but they're all two pences. Um, I just had a signal, I wouldn't normally dig. It was quite a low tight tone, and here it is, it's very green. I've not looked at it. Oh, it's a 20 pence piece. Interesting. So the 20 pence pieces give a low tone. I should know that by now. The 20 pence was there, I had another signal there, exactly the same, and it's a 50 pence piece. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to stop using the dais in areas like this. I had no intention of using it today. It's just, uh, you know, carrying the drone and the camera, a spade and a metal detector. Sometimes it's just easier to carry something light. And it's quite a walk. I've had to come right down this cliff. You know, maybe half a mile. It's uh, a steep hill. Um, but next time, I'm definitely going by instincts and I'm going to use the... Uh, I'm going to go on to the Nocta Relic. So we had 20 pence. Then we had 50 pence. And now we've got another signal exactly the same. It's got to be another coin, surely. There we are, another coin. Three coins within two feet. Another 50 pence. <laughs> Unbelievable. I want something old, man. Something interesting. Anyone have any ideas on that one? Very heavy. Little round disc on the end of a rod and at the bottom two holes. I'm guessing it's something to do with fishing, but I don't know. It's very heavy, is that? Something different, I like it. I just found another coin in there, and it was completely green, and uh, I've told you before, rub some uh, wet sand on it, and it, it takes the green off. I needed to identify it. I couldn't. I think it is quite modern. I, I don't know. But it's from the Isle of Man, look. An Isle of Man coin, you can tell by the three legs. I've never had an Isle of Man coin before, I don't think. I'm guessing that's a 10 pence. But from the Isle of Man, that's a beauty. Look at that! If you don't know already, and you're wanting to know how to get Deep Digger Dan excited, take a look at this. Take a look at what I just found. You can see it from here. Can you see it shining? Look at this. Look at this, look at this. Oh, I got so excited. Maybe I still should, no. No, that's just rubbish, rubbish, isn't it? It is metal. It's a girl, it must be a little girl's headband. It can't be gold, it's not gold, it's not heavy enough. How excited was I? Something else popped out here. You've got this stream coming through, down here. Which has to be a good sign, doesn't it? Um, something else here. I don't think it's anything special. I, th I would guess that's off a suitcase, wouldn't you? Clasp off a suitcase. Not bad, actually. Quite like that. I'd love to have seen it on the suitcase, see how old it was. So that is it for me and Bobby Sand. Nice, nice little beach. Um, I enjoyed it here. It reminds me a bit of where I come from in Flamborough. Um, I can imagine there are things to be found on here when the sand isn't washed on. Like uh, I explained with the other guy. If you just have them pebbles all the way out and it's a low tide, I can imagine you find some fantastic things. Anyway, I've got to call it a day. It's starting to get dark. I've got about a 50 minute drive ahead of me, I think. Then I've got to edit and upload. That's going to take between two and six hours. Um, relax if I possibly can. Plan tomorrow. That's another, another hour or two, which I normally do in the middle of the night in bed. I just hope you, 
I just hope you understand how hard this trip is. Some days are easy, don't get me wrong. Some days I just take days off, I just take it easy because I just can't do it. But most days, like today and yesterday, I'm really putting the effort in and I hope you appreciate it. And I hope you appreciate it by showing your appreciation by donating to Rays of Sunshine. See you all tomorrow. I don't know where yet, I don't know when, but I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. If you'd like to donate to Rays of Sunshine, simply click the link in the description below and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.